Hey everybody, welcome to uh, another episode of Dan Plays Games from the Elder Times. Uh, welcome to, uh, hope you had a good week, and uh, welcome to your uh, Thursday night. Um, I have uh, Yali's uh, roaming around. It's been quite the week. Uh, let me see, what are we dealing with here? So Yali's been a little bit under the weather, so I'm giving him a little extra attention uh, than I normally do. So he may pop in or out of the room, possibly. Uh, tonight, we'll see. And uh, what else? One of my monitors is starting to go. <laughs> yes, that's the same. <laughs> it's the cat from the Elder Times. One of my monitors is starting to get glitchy. So if I look to the side and look perplexed at some point tonight, I've got a monitor that's that's winking out <laughs> occasionally. And on um, on the the restream service that we use for Twitch. The uh, the put the if you didn't know we're playing the Advanced Dungeons and Dragons Pool of Radiance game from 1988 and suddenly that's not an an a, uh, an available category on uh, on on Twitch via restream uh, tonight. So if you look if you're looking on Twitch, we I don't have the the, the correct game registered because it's not available all of a sudden uh, today. So anyway. Uh, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> I'm glad you're here, Elfina, and anybody else. So uh, let's get started. So I feel like um, assuming uh, everything, <laughs> assuming the computer doesn't crash and I remain online, my monitor's on, my cat doesn't get sick, uh, I feel like I'm really, really close to the end of Pool of Radiance, and I am, I am really looking forward to, um, uh, to, to following through and finally finishing it. So let's get started here, if I can remember how to do this. The last episode was kind of a, uh, kind of a bit of a quagmire, and it was, it was two episodes ago that I supposedly took care of Tyr and Thraxis in the, uh, the castle of Valhavo, uh, you know, which, which I was led to believe was supposed to be the big boss, but obviously wasn't. So, uh, once again, I'm going to go back to Castle, uh, Valhavo Castle and try to find some kind of secret extra boss conclusion. As usual, if you're new, new to the stream, uh, no spoilers, please. This is not a speed run. This is the opposite of that. Everything I'm doing here for the first time ever. So I'm always surprised by everything we see. And that's part of the, part of the fun, I would say. So, got my code wheel here for your 1988 analog to DRM and whatever. And the Elven Rune, it's one of the harder ones to, oh, and there goes my monitor, wonderful. Um, the one I'm playing on is stable for what it's worth. This one, right? Is that one? This, this is a particularly hard symbol to match up on the non-digitized version on this on the code wheel is it this this is incredibly hard to match up is it this it's got like a top to a t and then it's got two things on the side Okay, this is okay, this is the one that's the closest. And then a dwarven rune that has a hat and two side legs. Okay, and I follow the dotted line and it says It says not now, which I don't think is a legitimate word. Is that possible? The dotted line. Weird. Okay, well, I'm going to put it in. It's, I don't know. Is it right? Is it wrong? Hmm. Well, I'm in. I don't know if that worked, actually. But hopefully, hopefully I don't get nailed later on for having the wrong code wheel. All right, so loading my A game. And um, so I got back from Valhavo Castle. It was a pretty difficult, um, pretty difficult fight last time. So I keep getting uh, slogged by these, these infinite giant snakes. I generally get hit by giant boulders on the way in. Um, so our, our process at the moment is turn the whole party invisible. That helps a bit on the entry with the giant boulders. 
and I'm being told that occasionally it triggers a glitch that, that prevents the wandering monsters, I guess. So I'm gonna continue on with that. I need near Journey, my wizard, to have a knock spell to get through the gate of the castle every time. And let me just look at my map. So last time um, I ran into a teleporter in the in Castle of here for the first time. It's pretty big here. Most of it is this uh, this garden maze with the giant snakes. So I put together my my initial map and my teleported map. And the best I can figure is there's some space here on the north side. So my plan for tonight is go on the north side and kind of try to get into these kind of larger spaces. Hopefully there's something useful there is my plan. And the easiest way to get there, I think, is the gate on the east side. So here's the gate on the east side. And I think that's my most direct route, which should avoid, um, should minimize the number of wandering monsters, hopefully. So that's my plan. So here we go. So I got my, my party all healed up. <laughs> Yes, the copy protection police might be on the way. I'm sure there's a I'm sure there's a Sazy address from 1988 that's I'm sure still active that you can report me on. Let me just check check in on my my spells here. So I'm pretty sure that I uh, recovered all my spells last time. So there's near Jarini, my team leader. She's got the invisibility 10 foot radius that I'm going to make the party invisible with. I got the knock spell. I guess I might as well just use invisibility right now, right? Okay, so a whole party is invisible. I just hope I don't run any wandering monsters on the way to the castle. Probably unlikely. And uh, then I can encamp here, magic, memorize, replace that slot with another fireball. I really wish that the fireballs wiped out a batch of giant snakes, but unfortunately the giant snakes have 25 hit points. Fireball from a sixth level wizard has an average of like 21, and then half of them make their saves on top of that. So, um, you know, unfortunately I have, to, I have to hit them with one fireball usually, and then melee, which is enormously risky, or use two fireballs, which is not great. So off we go, back to Valhavo Castle. Can I remember how to get through here? Is it here? No, it's here, right? I'm trying to remember where all the doors are on the overhead map of the slums. Okay, so here can we go through Kudos well. You know, it's funny because if I go to the north of this map, I keep running into batches of wandering kobolds that I can get to run off, but they... It's weird that there's monsters still on this map. Okay, and here's Pohal Plaza, whatever it is. Okay, so here we are at Stojanau Gate, right? And going up to the castle, I think it's here. Okay, and of course it's night. So plan again is to go to the east, off to my right. Take that gate over here. I think I'm safe for now because there's no alarm going on. You may possibly hear my cat in the background because I got my door open for him to come out, which I normally don't do. And frankly, if you hear if you hear him yelling, that's actually a good. I'm actually thrilled that he's got enough energy to do that. So he's he's getting better from being a little sick this week. I think. Okay, so here's the gate here. Uh, gonna go in with a knock spell. Gonna get ambushed by giant boulders or not, or maybe not. Would be really nice. Okay. Hey. That's some guys who tried to bust in several times. And there's the alarm, unfortunately. Boulders. 
Okay, male one got hit. Okay, that's one. Hit the knock spell. All right, I'm in. Could have been worse. But unfortunately, the, the, the alarm is going off. So I'm going to try to be kind of efficient about this and get back to that northern part of my map. Okay, so I think I need to go straight about six paces. One, two, three, four, five, I think. Turn right. One, two, three, four, five. That's right. Turn back east. What, like three steps? One, two, three. Turn north. Back east. Okay, so I'm going to hit the wall here. Uh, I'm going to go north and pass through the gate between the quadrants. Right there. Okay, and here come the giant snakes. So I'm about halfway to where I wanted to get and running the gi giant snakes the first time. I really wish there was some way to avoid this. If I could flee these guys, I would totally do it, but I don't think that ever works. I'm going to try fleeing. I mean, if it doesn't work, I have to fight them anyway. Yeah, I don't think that's ever worked. And then I'm right up against them, unfortunately. Okay. So, of course, now I'm in terrible place for a fireball, right? And if I, if I draw any of these guys back, they get free attacks. Boy, this is really bad. <sighs> okay, well, I guess there's a reason not to flee, right? Um, <laughs> okay, where could I put a stinking cloud? Put it here? I could put it... Okay, so I could, I could move up this diagonal, get wherever I want. Put one here. I think I'm gonna put it. I think I'm gonna put it here. Actually, that is range four. So, means if I go up on that diagonal, then I'm actually adjacent to the snake. I'm gonna take that chance. Okay, that's okay. That actually took okay. Well, that took half of them out with that. That's a good. That is a good second level spell. Um, do these guys ever flee? I don't know. Adele has stinking clouds and also has fireballs. Boy, that would be, boy, fucking stinking clouding everything in sight. That actually seems to be about the best thing to do. I guess I'm going to do that. Um, So to stinking cloud that guy, I would have to be basically above Harton, I guess. In some ways, that actually is better than a fireball because it just locks them down entirely once they fail their save. And the rest of it's easy. I wish I had. I wish I had infinite stinking clouds. Uh, I 
guess I'll guard. Okay, so I like avoiding possible poison. I don't like shooting off all my stinking clouds. So let's save that game as B tonight. All right, and then back to the map, right? So I am, there's a little bit of danger. Every time there's a fight, there's a little bit of danger that I forget where the fight's happening. And I look down at my maze map and I'm like, where am I again? That wall, the, the, the wall on my left actually kind of helps. So I'm turning north, I'm going three steps north. One, two, three, back to the wall. North two paces, two paces two paces and then I'm getting in this like open area about four paces north one two three or so one two three one two three that's one of the and what I'm looking at right here is one of the uh, corner uh, towers I'm pretty sure where are the tops of little broken there that's interesting um one two frig okay so i'm going to uh, not flee i'm going to combat these guys and they always come in batches of four uh more open more open area here so I can't block them with stinking clouds quite so easily so I guess I'm gonna resort to fire and you know what I'm gonna class prayer with Harton I think here we'll catch all of them, pretty sure. Pretty sure. So there's the 21 points, which is average for my uh, my party wizards. And they're down to about four. So at least, so I ought to be able to arrow them or magic missile them at this point. good damage let's uh, let's switch to missile weapons while I can Okay, now that snake already attacked, so if I can kill this one, I could avoid an attack round from this guy. If my damage wasn't shitty. Okay, so if I'm, now that I'm in range I will switch back to my preferred longsword plus five crap These snakes are a real pain.
so another magic missile ought to finish that off now, I think. Now the question is, did I give Harton, sorry, did I give Griffith slow poisons? I did, okay. So I think I need to, okay, I'm already next to him. All right, so Harden's back up uh, with the slow poison. Now, I got to remember, I've made the mistake in the past of forgetting that I have a party member up because of slow poison um, and then resting, and then they die from the poison later. So note to self, um, I have to get back to town to get the neutralized poison um, to have Harden not actually die. So that's on the docket. Let me just make a note of that. Instant death poison, of course. Okay, so now I will not continue the battle. I will have Harton uh, cure himself so that if he goes down, I don't lose all of his cure lights. That is a harsh wandering encounter. Harton's max hit points are 23. And male one is 28. Okay, so good enough. Let's save this. And try to continue. So I'm pretty close to where I wanted to get to. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go west a little bit more. South. West about three paces. One, two, three. South, west, south. Okay, so for what it's worth, if I were to go left, that would be, I think, where I got teleported to this section. And now I'm going into a place I've never been, I believe. So south, yeah, okay. So Harden's taking a little bit of damage as we proceed. And then I'll turn right. And turn north, interesting. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, that was, Way less interesting than I thought it because that actually connects up to um, the northern uh, the northern edge here that I've been before. So I really thought there would be some more interesting result to that. Hmm. Okay, now I see where there's a, there's one place where there could be a twisty path to the part that I'm getting to. Let's try that. Okay, so going back south about six paces. One, two, three, four. Four, five, six, turn east, turn north. Okay, so I'm going back where I had that fight, frankly. Two, three. No. Now, I have been told it is an option to go through the hedges if you're willing to take 200 points of poison damage. <clears throat> so I suppose one could do that and then, I guess, use a slow poison, I guess. <clears throat> it would be an option. I guess, I guess it would 
I guess it would abbreviate Wandering Monsters, I suppose. So I'm starting to consider that. Now, right here. Okay, so here's a path that's going to, I hope, take me on kind of a twisty southern way that I haven't been yet. Let's try this. So one, two. Turn west. One, two, three. Yeah. You know, turn south about three paces, I'm guessing. One, two, three. Okay, one, two, three. Now, am I just in that big garden area? Ah, crap, that's not helpful. All right, well, that's just that's just connecting up to another place that I've already been. Well, that's not helpful at all. So there is clear. So I guess maybe I need a teleporter. It seems to me like there's a bunch. There's some blank spaces that seem completely cut off, if I'm not correct. So now, now I guess I just need to. I guess I just need to hunt for teleporters into the blank spaces, I guess. All right. Where would be promising spots? Tell you what, I'm going to go back south. I'm going to get back towards the gate. Uh, that I came in so that if the party, if I get hammered again, I can get out easy. That seems like a reasonable strategy. Okay, so I'm back in the southeast quadrant. I want to go west. One, two, three, four. Oh, just, I just turned dawn. That's nice. Okay, so. The way that I'm thinking, so there's this northern path that I haven't taken, and this goes into like a, I don't know, I'm guessing this is going to twist around on itself and probably dead end pretty fast. So I could go two, two paces north, maybe three. One, two, three. Yeah. Okay, turn east. Two. Turn north. South. Gotta go two south to turning west. So what's gonna happen is probably gonna go two paces west and then one pace back east and that'll dead end, I guess. No, one space west. South. Okay, it's going the other direction. West. Yeah, there's the dead end. Yeah, hey, Cammy Mark. Yeah, this is the last, I mean, this is Valhebo Castle. It's the last part of the, if I, you can find where the exit of the boss is or whatever is supposed to be here. I guess I'm gonna, I'm gonna wind up having to map out this entire giant maze. Okay, so now I'm going back from this dead end. What was, Oh, that connects up here? Oh, weird. So I could go east and then south. Oh, weird. Hmm. You know, what I haven't done is I haven't done, I don't think I've taken this. I mean, this has, to, I think this has to, doesn't this have to dead end in about two paces? Unless my maps are wrong. One, two. Uh, 
Oh, that I guess that connects up here, I guess. Unfortunately, Harton's lost about half of the hit points I gave him. Uh, so one, two, and then I'm back at this southern gatehouse. Interesting. Oh, interesting. So I guess there's this whole I guess there's this whole path here that I've never taken. You know, I actually haven't this this gatehouse is about is only about two by three spaces, but I actually got I didn't actually entirely explore this, so I'm just gonna walk around in here. Now, okay, here's the thing. I haven't heard an alarm in a while uh which i guess i've been advised so i guess that happens and then i can rest but then i have but wait i have to get back to town because of the because of the, because of the poison oh crap which is kind of unfortunate okay so resting here is not an option do i have a neutralized poison on a scroll I don't. I have approximately one dump truck load of restoration spells. Even having dumped the majority of them in the past. But I don't have any neutralized poison capacity. So unfortunately, uh, I've got to go back to town to get that. And resuscitate Harton. So, it is what it is. So we're going to go north. Interesting. Kind of too bad. If I get poisoned, I have got to abort the mission. And uh, so I'm, I'm out of the castle, but I better have Griffith. Cure Harton before he expires, of course. Okay, maybe that's enough? Question mark? You know, so again, you know, I'll confess that I don't use clerics in my own D&D uh, &D games. Um, I can't even remember how slow poison works by the book. I feel like it's probably not this one hit point every couple turns. Don't run mazes. Mazes are no fun. You know, I made that mistake, right? Okay, so the last time I made that mistake was I was running Rap and Athic and uh, with, you know, our, our basically our standard friends, most of whom you see on the channel. And I was running Rap and Athic and there's a place, whatever level it is, I think there's some minotaurs in around that area. Um, and there's a place that it starts having really elaborate, intricate mazes. And Paul uh, took the leadership in doing the mapping. And it, it, it you know, it, it bogged down in exactly the way that you would think. And... Uh, we played for a while and I was like, yeah, this is not, you know, the other players aren't engaged and this isn't working well and people are getting bored. And, you know, knowing me, 
you can probably guess it went on too long before it dawned on me. <laughs> before I read the room. And then on later expeditions, I think I was... I think I was saying, I'm going to make three wandering monster rolls or make an intelligence check or something like that. And the funny thing is that I learned that these elaborate mazes weren't initially part of Rap and Athic. The original version of Rap and Athic doesn't have these giant mazes. And it was like an add-on. It was an extra add-on that they added later. And the initial version had fairly simple, had, had fairly simple mazy areas. And I feel... Um, sympathy that I think I would make the same mistake of like, you want more? I'm, here's an even more elaborate maze. And I feel like kind of a, sh a fairly short one wouldn't be quite so nightmarish. Um, uh, and I feel like the, the original one would actually possibly be playable. Like the, the amount of time that it took us to get bored with it was about the right, about the size that it was initially. Um, and you know, it's one of those things whereby, yeah, as I think as a single player game, I think I can commit to it myself, but it's, a, it is really tricky with, you know, normal mapping techniques that most of your party's not going to be engaged and they're just going to be sitting around fiddling their thumbs while the DM and the mapper are the people that are fundamentally interacting with it. So, yeah. Yeah, right. All of us old school DMs have fallen down that pit. Or we, you know, we ha what have we done? We've, we've, we played Zork, right? And we were really thrilled when we figured out the puzzle of how to figure out the maze in Zork. And we're like, I'm going to bring that to my tabletop game and bring the same sense of wonder and excitement. And then like, oh no. <laughs> oh no, I've made a huge mistake. I definitely need healing. Uh, do I have enough money for neutralized poison? Probably not. Uh, is Griffith carrying enough cash? Yeah, I guess he is actually. So trade to hearten 200 platinum is the right amount. And now I can heal hearten. Great. Harton is cured. Just in time. With six seconds to go. All right, so that was uh, not the most nightmarish trip into Valhavel Castle. Interesting. Proclamation 114. I think I've seen that before. Yeah, right. interesting. So Kami Mark saying the largest dungeon maze you use is five by five nodes. It's not terrible. I that's that's actually a good metric. I almost ten by ten seems large to me right now. So one hundred fourteen. Yeah, it's so interesting. So, so this might actually just be a, a, a bug, actually. So Proclamation uh, 114 is, Be it known that the council is offering a special reward for the safe return of the heir to the House of Bavant. Said miner was carried off during a buccaneer attack on the merchant ship in which he was sailing. Apply to the council clerk for the council's commission and additional information as the abduction. So I've already done that quest, right? So we went to the buccaneer camp before, got that kid. Um, you know, he's in a cage, uh, led let go a bunch of animals to make some confusion, grab the prisoners out of the cage and, and hightail it out of there. So we've done that. If I go to the city clerk about that, she doesn't know anything about it. So I think that's a bug at the moment. Yeah, right. So come, thank, come and Mark, come and Mark, thanks for looking that up. Yeah, so the, 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 the extra ones that they added are 30 by 20. I think I found, see now I wanna look that up specifically. I think I found like an early edition of Rap and Athic where I think they just have like a question mark in those spaces. And they were like, the DM, you can decide what you want to do or something like that. 
Okay, now I'm curious. Is that the first one? Is this the first one? Oh, you know, now I'm not finding this early version that I had. Okay, I'm gonna skip that. It's gonna take me too long to find it. Um, yeah, I feel like I, I, I saw an early version of Rappanathic that just in those spaces just had a question mark and was like, make an intelligence check to get through or something like that. Uh, or, or it was very small, like five by five. And I was like, oh, that actually would be more playable. Okay, I do want to stay. So uh, let's save this as the A game. Get, what do I need here? I need healing spells. I need slow poisons, obviously. back need my stinking cloud back need more fire I used more more magic than I thought actually okay I really wish, you know, I wish Nirjarini could take another another stinking cloud, but I need this knock. This. Oh, yeah, I gotta get the invisibility back. Okay, let's just get that stuff back first. Okay, so ditch a fireball. Memorize invisibility. Cast said invisibility. Place that with fireball again. Okay, so and then uh, rest up, get my only hit points back too. So my, unfortunately, my other monitor is winking in and out, which is a little bit distracting. It just started today. Okay, so Harden needs to rest for 17 hit points. Seems to be the efficient way to do that. All right, so looking at, looking at my map, so I guess, you know, there's this, there's this path by that southeastern tower that's easy to get to. So I think I'm gonna explore that and, I don't know, I feel like that might be a place to hide a teleporter. That's either gonna be a total dead end or
Interesting. I guess there might be a single branch there, possibly. Okay, so let's uh, here save it, A game. I think everything's backed up to snuff. So let's try this again. I'm going to go in the same gate here. Door here that I always forget where it is. This is the place? Yeah, okay. All right, and hoping no wandering monsters, which would screw up my invisibility. Damn it. That is exactly what I didn't want to do. Uh, okay, what, what what is most likely to maintain the invisibility in this system? Parlay? Maybe parlay? I feel like fleeing isn't super helpful. I'm going to try to parlay and be abusive. We'll let you off this time. The monsters scuttle away. Okay, so I think that was successful, I think. Hello, we are six ghosts, and all of us have two fireballs each. Would you like to flee or parlay? Okay, so I think I got the invisibility still on, pretty sure. I didn't fight them. I didn't make any attacks. Okay, so back to the east gate. Safe for now. All right, and in we go again. Okay, so I would love, I would love one of these times where I don't get, I mean, it seems like if I don't get hit by any giant boulders, then the alarm doesn't go off or something. I don't think it is. So is is invisibility something you can see in the character sheet? I'm not seeing it there, right? I got status. Okay. So yeah, I'm not I am not seeing that. If someone else knows a place I could I could find out about that would be nice. Okay, so here we go again. So here come giant boulders. Hey, that's them guys who keep trying to bust in like seven or eight times. And there's the alarm. Okay. Only one. Oh my god. Hmm. That's different. I don't think I've ever run into a, a giant patrol inside the castle like this. Sacrilegious scum! Okay. The advanced weapon's ready. So this will be a human fighter and five hill giants, I think. Not my favorite guys. Uh, I guess, you know, if I put a stinking cloud right here, that would actually prevent the giants from getting to me. That could be, that could be nice. Of course they can throw boulders. I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna do that actually. Just confirming that she's got stinking cloud. So I'm gonna be a little aggressive here. Am I close enough? Yeah, that yeah that works. I can put it right here. That's fine. Let's do that.
Okay, so it's going to actually block in all those those giants. So let's port Mailwin, get kind of close there. Now, should I should I tap them with a fireball or not? Is the question. Is that really helpful? Uh, I guess I'm gonna have to. I guess I'm gonna have to get them down on hit points somehow. So, I guess yes. And better while they're all stacked up and they start zip, zipping around behind a stinking cloud. You know, it's interesting that the, that the monsters don't go through the stinking cloud because I feel it should be. I think if I was normally roll, ruling D and D, I would I would permit people to walk through the stinking cloud, make a saving throw, and show up on the other side. But nobody ever does it here, which is kind of makes it extra powerful because there's like a, no matter what happens, it's a full on blocker. Okay, twenty two damage. It's not bad. All right, so Griffith would be useful in melee up front, like here. Okay, this is fine, because the fighter is going to come through, run into him. He's got a great AC. I'll just leave him there guarding. Oh, jeez. Wow. Oh, right, it was me. Right, that was, that was Griffith with his guarding attack. That's good. Okay. That's fine. Okay, so let's... Who is a good... Okay, so two hit points on this guy. Is that even, you know, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna get another shot. So find somebody that's more damaged like this guy. Fortunately, they, 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 they're terrible at hitting with their boulders, fortunately. Here's a question. I don't know if you guys, you know, I, I actually do wish there are times in, in standard D&D &D where I wish that, you know, I guess this did wind up sort of happening in, I guess, third edition. They started having ability scores for everything. I do wish that there was a distinction between the, your melee attack and your ranged attack for monsters, because like giants are a really good example. Like, you know, in a lot of fiction, uh, like I, th I think Lord of the Rings or, or things like that, you know, giants can throw boulders, but they're so incredibly inaccurate that you don't really worry about, like the fiction itself says, they're probably not going to hit anything. But in standard D&D, &D, where you're just using things hit dice to hit with, um, if you're a powerful melee attack monster, then you're also a powerful range attack monster. And there are times I wish there was a distinction there. But, you know, it makes things more complicated when you do that. Should I push, I mean, you know, I should bring him around to the bottom is what I should do. I'm just going to delay. Yeah, so Kami Mark, that's a good point. So, and, and the funny thing is, is in, in original D&D, &D, right, you go back to Chainmail, it actually does say, um, and this comes through in uh, Holmes, the original Holmes Basic, right? It says they work as catapults and catapults in Chainmail, um, you at least the optional rule says you you pick a target and you just roll two d6 and you only hit it if you roll a seven actually effectively um and that's exactly what uh what happens in home basic so uh in that particular case yeah your melee attack does one thing you have this totally different mechanic for the range attacks 
And there are times when I'm like, yeah, that's not bad, but boy, my players would be literally bamboozled if I start bringing that in. Okay, so let's kind of not use all my magic up. Can I hit anything from here? Right, that all makes sense. So I'm still delaying with him. Okay, so get Rollin out of the way, first of all. And then I can bring Griffith down here in melee for enormous amounts of damage. Whoa, what? How the hell did he get through there? How the hell did that work? Hmm. That's bonkers. Okay, not a great place for near Jorini to be. Right? What the hell is that? Okay, but it, okay, that's the guy that has two hit points. Nice shot. So I'm thinking about pulling Griffith to the north there and blocking for New Jorini, but I actually think I'm going to leave him here. And then, and then my plan is to use Harton to block the north part. Like that. And I guess I might as well cast a Cure on New Jorini, I guess. Interesting. Interesting. I think Kothag, that's an interesting uh, reference there. I don't think that's something I've read myself. Are those guys fleeing? And now I'm. I, didn't, I wasn't paying close attention. Are they. To begin, will you? Thank you. Must have just like barely maybe I just barely bought brought them through a threshold. I mean if I if I if I could I'd let them go off, but it looks like they're not finding a way out, so I think I have to push forward, I guess. Griffith, I'm willing to get into melee.
Nice. That Stinking Cloud is a nice spell. That just changed the whole... Again, largely because they won't walk through it, regardless of what their save chances are. Changes the whole battlefield. Uh, I guess I'm going to push Harton. Harden's got such a good AC, I'm going to try this. Okay, well, sometimes you win some, you lose some. Just in time for the stinking cloud to go away. Pretty sure I don't need any of that, right? Okay, so let's uh, save that as the B game currently. Everybody is damaged. All right, so Griffith's down by 10. Harton's down by the 11. Cadell's down by 8. Nijarini's down by 5. Pretty much all of those are worthy of a cure spell. Let's say, let's say, let's do the ones that are at least eight. So it's Griffith, Harton, I guess Cadell counts. That's good. Sixteen. Okay, so he's down by seven. All right, so everybody's everybody's down by less than eight. I guess I'm willing to, to work with that. All right, so we're gonna keep uh, keep going forward here from the gate. Uh, follow this path that's on the southern that follows the southern wall. Would love to get the um, alarm to like wait out the alarm would be great. I feel like there's a t yeah. I feel like there's a tent. What the fuck? This is, this is different, right? This is I've never had these 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 giant patrols show up in the guard. It's always been giant snakes. So this seems very like the one right by the gate was like, well, maybe that's because I I wasn't in when it resolved or something like that. This seems very different to me. Hmm. Combat it is. Options here, so could it, so since it's vertical, since the fight's vertical, the stinking cloud isn't so great against the giants. Like if I put one right here, they could they could clearly, I mean they could clearly go up by the side of it. Although I could block it with my fighters. Uh, maybe try that. Okay, maybe I'm going to try that. I'm going to try to block this with a stinking cloud, and therefore Griffith being right here would be nice. Getting kind of tricky here. Let's try that. And 
I guess Harton being over here would be nice. Good. And therefore, mail when casting the cloud here is what I want. And okay, so Rollin shooting from here is good. Okay, so we're going to fireball those guys once. It's funny that, you know, what happens in this game seems to be about what we want. It's like they, they, they hit with the melee really, really frequently and their missiles miss a lot. So I don't know what, I don't know what mechanic the game's using to make that happen. I'm going to try charming this fighter. That sometimes helps. Like so. Okay, fireball all of these guys. One, two, three. I think that ought to do it. Seems like you can pretty reliably guess that the fireball is going to do 21 or 22 points. I think I mostly want to save near journey spells actually. Yeah, it could be a range penalty. You wouldn't think, I mean, they're supposed to go 20 inches, right? How does that work? Actually, no. I don't think that would be by the book. I mean that would make sense to have a ranged penalty on the giant boulders, but by the book it just says you can, they can hurl rocks from one inch to twenty inches, and there's no range categories like AD and D has the short, medium, long. It doesn't it doesn't say anything about that. So mm -mm. I suppose someone could have come in and said, well that's really close to the longbow range, so I'm going to use the longbow category penalties. Maybe someone could have added that. I'm just going to have her hang out for now. Hmm. Are they willing to just stand there and shoot boulders when they could run up? Seems slightly surprising. If it's not obvious, I have Griffith and Harton just hunkering down in full armor, because if I pick up a bow, then I have to put down my shield. And if someone starts running at them, I'd be in not quite so good position. He's doing pretty well there. try to help my ch nameless charmed fighter there if I can. Oh, hit Cadell. 
Weak. Oh, nice. Remember, Harton's got another pair of uh, Gauntlets of Ogre Power at this point. Now, I kind of want to pull Cadell back so he can use his bow, but of course, that would be an attack of opportunity, or whatever we want to call it here. Um, dur -dur -dur -dur. So, do that instead. Oh, so they're they're trying to flee. Looks not super successful. Oh, and then that one surrendered like we expected. Okay, all right. I should probably stop looking at this money that I save that I leave behind every time. Okay, so there's that. Yali, Yali, don't, don't, don't lick the trash can. Come on, put up. I know it's delicious. All right, so, uh, Griffith, we'll say, okay, Harton's down by the seven, so leave him like that. Cadell's now down by about 14, so let's just heal Cadell. Four is his max, so now he's at six. Okay, good enough. That's fine. Doing pretty well. This this foray. We're trying to preserve our resources as much as possible. Okay, so let's try a little bit more. So I'm gonna go down and again take this path by the southern wall is the plan. Here, here, here. Nobody's poisoned. You know, I stopped counting because I, okay, so how, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we'll go north. Now ah, for Pete's sake, and there's a dead end. Well, that was not what I wanted. So either there's some dead space, either there's like one row of dead space here or my map's off, which is possible. You know, let's try... Okay, so there's some stuff nearby that might be of interest. Some branches I haven't taken yet. All right, you know, I think that's how I got in. I think that's where I came in the first time from the other direction. Yeah, okay, so I think that's where my map's off. So if I go about three paces this way, one, two, three. Ah, oh, crap, you got to be kidding me. Is this weird that the giant snakes have all been replaced by fighter giant patrols? Is that a good sign? Did I deplete the giant snakes? I mean, last time Disparal said that never happened, so. All right, let's try this again. I think I'm, I, I think I use I think I've used one fireball each fight. I'm trying to I'm trying to preserve them. So once again, right? If this if this path is this if this passageway works, I'll, I'll block the center with a stinking cloud, hit him with fireball once, and then and then finish him off with ranged weapons. Seems to be working okay at the moment. At least I don't get poisoned that way. 
Yeah, okay, so there we go. So, so a stinking cloud right down the center would block the giants. And then I'd be in a in a ranged fight. But that 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 works it seems to work pretty well. So let's try it again. Do I have another one? No, she's out unfortunately. I guess I might as well start off. So I could start off with a fireball. I actually can't hit all of them. If I put it here, one, two, three. Actually, if I hit him in the head, I think I actually would hit everybody. 